There was an urgent knock at Jalim's door. The clock read a quarter past two in the morning. He closed his journal and stood up from his desk. Yes, coming. He opened his door. Catherine stood in front of him, her cheeks stained with hastily wiped tears. Kath? Jalim, can we... can we talk? Oh, isn't it quite late? Please, it's... it's urgent. All right. Jolene let her inside. Lady, you smell like my vintage bottle of Bourgogne. Did you get so drunk you actually thought of apologizing first? I didn't think I'd see you that day. Cherie, what's wrong? Catherine's thumb went to her mouth without thinking. How could she even begin to tell Jolene what she had done? Honey, I was really upset with you today. So, despite any good sense, I went and got myself drunk. This time I dragged Rosa along with me. Things have a tendency to go out of hand when alcohol is involved, as you know. Long story short, I came onto Rosa. You know Rosa? The girl who is almost like my sister? Yes, I may have forced myself on her. And I did that right after she told me she has been abused before. She felt Jalim's hand take her thumb away from her mouth. Kath. She looked at her fingers in horror. Her habit had surfaced again. She thought she had gotten rid of this as she grew up. Replacing the nail biting with a meticulous, almost obsessive care of her fingers. My fingers are my livelihood. I must take care of them. Now the nails were chewed down to jacked stumps, and a couple of them had tiny blistering cuts. Kath, can you talk? Catherine's eyes snapped back to Jolim, as if he had just materialized in the room beside her. So, yes, like I was saying, darling, which is the worst thing? What do you think? This implied incest, my abuse of my best friend, or my infidelity to you. <laughs> or if that doesn't cut it, dear, may I divulge to you at one last point? I felt something worrying when I kissed her. Excitement. If she hadn't stopped me, something else would have... It felt so real. It didn't feel like a mistake. It felt like it had always been there, buried deeply. So much so that it felt like cheating. It was like a craving. I wanted it. It was something I haven't felt with you when we... Why is this happening? I don't know. I don't even know who I am anymore. Kath, you are scaring me. Tell me what's wrong. Would you still want to marry me? Would you still love me if you knew? I wouldn't. I can't even look at myself in a mirror. But I think I know who I am now. I'm a selfish, depraved bitch. I have always been the controlling, jealous lover to you. And just one night of drunken frenzy, I went and took advantage of the two people I care for the most. Not enough wine to justify this. I... I want to call off the engagement. At first, Catherine saw that Shalim treated it as a joke, but the panic in his eyes set in immediately. What? I said I'm calling off the engagement. Well, I refuse. You don't have a choice. I'm leaving tomorrow. No. Not until, not until you tell me what's wrong. Shalim's eyes didn't flinch. These were the looks he gave her that melted her heart. They were so sure and steadfast in their care. They were just fighting this morning, a fight she had started, as usual. Yet there was no doubt in his eyes at all. If she were to see that certainty fade away from his eyes, she knew it, ha it would break her. 
Is it about the fight earlier? Because, Kath, I swear to you, I haven't done any of the... No! No. Stop. Hearing him reinstate his devotion to her just made it more painful. Tears pooled in her eyes and fell in huge, ugly globs. She had been doing so well, too. She had thought she could hold it until she left. She wiped the tears as best as she could, but more kept pouring out. It, it isn't about that. Then what is it? What do you want me to do? Whatever it is, I shall do it. This was so hard. Why did this have to be so hard? Why did she even go there? I... Because she wanted to see his face. She wondered what it would be like for a cheater to go back to the arms of her lover. Would it change somehow? Did she still love him? How could she even tell? All her emotions were wrapped in a thick layer of guilt. It was hard to distinguish every painful thought. She'd started to sob now. Yes, indeed. Ugly, unflattering snorts came out of her nose. It felt comforting to hold on to the guilt. Its existence made the hatred towards herself bite less. Kath, please tell me what's bothering you. I, I don't deserve you. I'm a horrible person. You ought to find someone else to marry. Catherine let the words tumble out of her mouth. Slight relief to be rid of them. She looked tearfully up at Jalim to gauge his reaction, but he just stared back at her blankly. Why wouldn't he say anything? Catherine sobbed, fearing the worst. Jalim cleared his throat and spoke hesitantly. Uh, um, c could you uh, repeat that? He cupped his hand to his ear and angled it closer to her face. He apparently hadn't caught any of her heartfelt words. Catherine snarled angrily at him. You idiot! I'm having a breakdown here. But I didn't understand what you said. <laughs> I said you ought to find someone else because I am a horrible person. <laughs> Jolene pulled her to him. Oh, that's it? Whatever made you think that I'll accept that reason? Catherine's tears... Soaked his shirt. You don't know what I've done. Then tell me. You'll hate me. I guarantee it. Did you punch a baby? No. The inside joke made her laugh out of the blue. <laughs> she buried her face in his chest in a half sob, half laugh. Suddenly, her doubts were cleared. Suddenly, she didn't want to marry anyone else. Catherine's arms tightened around Jolim's waist. I've been taking you for granted, haven't I? I've been arrogant, expecting you to always adjust me, to adjust to me and my whims. A new fervor sprung out of her love for him. I don't deserve you right now. But I'll work on that, if you give me another chance. First, she would tell him what she had done. Then it would be up to him if he still wanted her. He deserved that decision. What I did... But Shalim stopped her with a kiss on her forehead. Tomorrow. After a hearty breakfast and a good night's rest. I'll listen to what you have to say. Though I'm quite sure my answer will be the same. Catherine's face melted into a smile and she beamed at her. My star finally smiles. Catherine wiped her eyes. I love you so much. She sighed with content. Part of her anxiety put to rest. <sighs> I do. I really do. She whispered that wa last one under her breath, as if trying to console herself. Jolene. Yes, dear. Will you make love to me? Jolene's brow shot up in surprise. Right now? Yes. No, uh, well, if you're not ready, later is also fine. Or tomorrow. But since it's already morning, then technically it is today, right? 
Julian's head tilted slightly, an amused smirk plastered on his face. Please, take me seriously, Julian. This is important to me. I have to know. I have to make sure. Make sure of what? <sighs> Catherine. Jalim held her hand. I think you are tired. And just a little bit more me. More than usual, I mean. But this is what we will do. Jalim guided the woman to the bed and set her down. We are going to lay on the bed. I am going to pet your hair until you fall asleep. I shall skip work today. Have the trifling little walk you want. And as such, if you are still in the lovemaking type of mood, then, mademoiselle, I will take you up for on your offer. Catherine's eyes moistened, but this time there were happy tears. I love you. <laughs> Tulim shrugged her and lifted Catherine's legs up onto the bed. I love you too. And you aren't, uh, and aren't you lucky? Save it. He climbed on the bed beside her. Catherine draped her arm over him. He searched for her hand, brought it up to his lips and patted it. She closed her eyes and rested her head on his chest, comforted by the warmth of his embrace. Moshu, can I ask you something? Hmm? Why do you love me so much? Julie mused for a while. Is that a trick question? It feels like a trick question. Catherine whined. All right, I shall humor you for now because you are in such a pathetic state. Hmm. I love you simply because it's easy to love you, darling. You are my star, my light. You keep me right, always. You make me want to do good by you, to be a better person. You aren't even my wife yet, but the townspeople are already calling you their lady. I may have to hand you the Marquis of myself. That is only because everyone in this town knows who I am. Oh, I wonder why that is. It is because you help sell vegetables in the marketplace on weekends. Or because you conspire with my cooks to hold impromptu picnics with the locals. <laughs> you know about that? One, one can only sneak out that much food without getting noticed, madame. It amuses me how the servants cover for you upon inquiry as well. It was my idea. They are not to blame. I know, darling. I know. Salim chuckled and kissed her temple. It goes to show how your presence uplifts everyone's lives. Including mine. <laughs> but honestly, those reasons aren't exactly why. I love you, Kath. I just do. Beyond what I thought I was capable of. Catherine's heart cracked with his last utterance. If I did something bad, would you still love me? Yes, I would. Are you sure? I'm sure. What if I've hurt an innocent person? What if I've hurt you? She bit her lip. What if I was unfaithful? Jolim stared at her questioningly. Catherine buried her face in his chest. She felt his hands smooth away her hair. He whispered gently into her ear. If you would still have me, come back to me. Shu, what happened doesn't matter at all. You are not... You are not your mistakes, Kath. Jolim cleared his throat. <coughs> Suddenly, he seemed to have trouble breathing. You have the power to... to change. How about you? If I told you that... I am not what I say I am, would you... Hmm? What do you mean? Oh, n never mind. It's a silly question. What? Is something bothering you, Shu? Jalim turned his head away and closed his eyes. Nothing, darling. We shall sleep now. 
Catherine patted away the frown on his brow. She traced his cheeks with her fingers. Talim, I do love you. Now, I am more than certain. It gives my heart happiness to know for sure. What reminded me was your generosity. You... You give every bit of yourself to the people you love. Do you know that? Because I have to, darling. Well, you have always inspired me, Shu. I have always looked up to you. You treat everyone, no matter their status, with kindness. Never have I met a man more generous and thoughtful about others. A man with so much love to give. And that is why I love you. You are a good man. <sighs> but if that's not what I really am... Catherine shook her head. You can't fake sacrifice, mon chou. I have seen you care for the people in this town. I've seen how you've loved me. I don't care much for intention, you see. It's what we actually do that defines us. Julian paused, his voice choked up in his throat. Not always. Not always. Julian found Catherine's hand on his face and squeezed it. She stretched her neck and kissed his cheek. Catherine, you are always scared I will leave you. But the truth is, I know it is you who will leave me. And it, it hurts. What? You are different. I've loved you for so long. It scares me how deep I have rooted myself. Sometimes I, I deem it better to end this wretched existence. To save you from... What are you talking about, Talim? You're not making any sense. Is it your turn to scare me? I, I'm sorry. They didn't speak for a while. The air became a little uncomfortable. She could feel Jolim's stressful breathing on her forehead. Catherine wondered what Jolim was, t was talking about. But it didn't seem like he wanted to discuss it further. When Jolim started to calm down... Catherine thought it was best to sleep and ask him about it the next day. But Jalim spoke again. His voice was low and serious. Catherine, do you love me? With all my heart, Jalim. I've loved you for what it seems like my whole life. <sighs> 